today's Game Changer in Agriculture, we're in Bob Cajun, Ontario, home of Grass Hill Farm and some of the best milk goat genetics in the world. Lloyd Wicks and family have brought together some of the best genetics in goats, milking goats, such that these goats in most parts of the world produce as much or more milk than a cow. They have gone to Vietnam, they're going to the Caribbean, they've been to the Caribbean, and we're selling goat genetics to the world. But it's again, it's that embedded knowledge and all the, the uh, background information that goes with that genetics that we're selling. But goats is a huge growing industry in milk. Our ethnic community, even in Ontario, you'll find out is we've got growing uh, demand for goat milk, but worldwide, we have huge opportunity, and Grass Hill Farms has taken advantage of that. We used to milk Holstein cattle and export Holstein genetics. We're now milking goats, and we have about a thousand goats, all purebred fawning. Uh, we're dealing with a number of countries around the world, setting up nuclear herd, and uh, we crop about 750 acres of land and grow all our own sunflowers, corn and whatnot, and hay to feed the goats. We try to pasture the goats and the Red Angus cattle as much as possible because ruminants are supposed to eat grass. The fawn and goat is the largest goat of the goat. They're the heaviest milkers. They seem to be probably the best goats to handle stress and the easiest goats to work with. Dealing with goats at this size is something that a woman and small kids can work with in a backyard type farm or they can work with it at a larger farm without a lot of infrastructure. The fawn and goat is the quietest, most domesticated of the breeds. When we went into this, coming from a background of exporting Holstein genetics around the world and Holsteins of course being the major cow breed, we wanted to make sure that we didn't limit our market opportunities by having a breed that was only of interest in certain niche markets. We have probably 30 countries right now that we're negotiating with uh, to set up goat herds and whatnot in the future, or that want to buy semen or embryos or in some way improve their genetics. So the the acceptability of the fawn and goat on a world basis is very strong and we're getting to the point now where we have documented uh, proof of how well these goats have adopted in countries like Trinidad and Mexico from some of our earliest sales. What we hope to do now is to develop would be the first of what I would call satellite herds. So if this is the nucleus herd what we hope to do is to set up a satellite herd in each country that would have our genetics of the next generation. And rather than trying to deal with a whole group of different individuals in that country, we would deal with the satellite herd. They would disperse our genetics either through live animals, semen, or embryos to the other herds in the country. And then we would restock the next generation of genetics into that satellite herd every year. This whole process is probably five to ten years ahead of where I expected it to be. If we can get import permits, we could never keep up to the demand for live goats. So that's what's really fueled our interest in semen and embryos. And it's possible to ship semen and embryos a whole lot cheaper and with a whole lot less red tape than what it is to ship live animals. Look at the, at the width of the chest and compared to what you would see in a standard barn, that's probably twice to three times the amount of chest width that you would get in most goats. So it was one of the things that we selected highly for at the beginning because it was also one of the things that we concentrated on with the cows. And uh, when we get into goats that, you know, with the multiple birth, we knew it was going to be very important. Our goal is, is to try to breed better genetics. And one of the real tools that we have in the goat industry that will allow us to do a lot of the genetic progress that's similar to what's happened in cows 
will be DNA technology. And although I think we have so much uh, information in the cow world that a lot of the DNA stuff is mostly marketing, in the goat world, because we have very little uh, evaluations at the uh, phenotypical level, DNA will be the, the necessary ingredient to make high level uh, genetic progress available so that these small sustainable farms in countries all over the world can go forward. And to me, as an old guy, it's really exciting to be part of new technology like that. And with the quick turnaround in the goat industry, I might still be alive long enough to see if it works. Thank you.